Wait, it's a. Uh, this is actually a Rachel from uh, Facebook. So I met oh, okay. her. I met her twice on on Facebook and then on Discord. And so that's pretty cool. And we didn't realize that we were each other. Some of you guys are pretty cool. I can tell. A lot of you do take it seriously. Yeah. It's just most of you don't. Oh, uh, a lot of thing. A lot of the thing that people do as well is that they do like. They use their type to kind of hold them back. Yeah. That's a big thing. Like, what was I saying? Like, I was telling the chat, um, imagine, be, <laughs> like, like, literally what you're doing when you when you do that is, like, you, you, you pretend you're a victim to your own personality. Right. Like, your own personality. Like, yeah. you. Like, that doesn't make sense. It's, I think there's a difference between recognizing your weaknesses and acknowledging them. Mm hmm and just using it as an excuse to ignore responsibilities that you have. Yeah. You can't ignore responsibility. It's not an option. Yeah. Just don't. Just don't. Um, learning about my type made me way more humble. Yeah. Yeah. By but... light years. Mm -hmm. Very. I like knowing that I don't listen to people. I wasn't aware. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was, how, a, how I, thought I was a great listener. Because people might have even been telling you, but you weren't listening. Yeah, to I'm misinterpreting people, weirding them out. Mm -hmm. Well, no, probably not. The uh, thing no, about... I have. Oh, yeah? I've always tried to finish people's sentences, and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, that happens. Because I assume they know what I know, or they don't know something that I'm trying to tell them. Right. All the time. Right. The thing about it is, people... <laughs> people are so agreeable and they don't want like a conflict that yeah. they'll just kind of be like oh you know that's whatever. why ENTPs they'll tell me I'm full of shit I'm like really? yeah I am? They're like no that's not actually what I was trying to say idiot <laughs> oh shit my bad <laughs> yeah that is that is a fun thing I would appreciate ENTPs. that I would have been aware if you guys had the balls to tell me yeah ENTPs are fucking red I have an ENTP friend that just is like um he'll he'll start just going just just and pounding at it if somebody disagrees with him, but he'll be like, why do you think that? Yeah, uh-huh. ENTPs always are f***ing stubborn about people accepting the truth or not. They are baffled why people reject it. Yeah, they Even don't if they understand. know why, they, they, they still rant. Yeah, it's weird because they see people getting emotional, and they're like, oh no, you're getting emotional, but I'm still right, though. Yeah. So let's let's continue, but don't yeah. get emotional, but uh, yeah, it's logic. Like, they don't realize no one is interested in continuing this line of thinking with you because yeah. they're pissed. That's also SE Demon. I do that too. That's why, that's probably why people confuse me for an ENTP because people keep saying, oh, you're mistyped, oh, you're an ENTP, oh, you might be an ESFP. Well, first of all, I'm not an ESFP by any stretch of the imagination. But I'd like to keep it open that we could could be f***ing wrong, but need some evidence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to present a better yeah, argument. Than... Give me an argument, I'll consider it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can always change my mind, but, like, ESFE doesn't make sense because I can't perform for shit. And ENTP, maybe. ENTP, maybe. maybe. Possible. Yeah, but that but... is something that me and him have in common. We, we do this thing where we'll just be like, if we're having an argument, we're, we're gonna go at it, and it doesn't matter how you feel, we're just gonna fucking go at it. It's funny because he's an empath, so it actually bothers him more, and he actually gets more heated about it, whereas I can kind of just keep a cool head, and I'm just, like, unfazed by guilt tripping, and I'm just like, why are you, why are you doing that? Like, I don't care about your feelings. Stop. That must be nice. I do. <laughs> yeah. I care about his feelings. You care about his feelings? Yeah, I'll just no. stop arguing and be like, you know what, man? Do you. Shit. In the child function. See, I'm an empath, but I don't care. You don't care? I don't give a shit. Oh, yeah. Like, you're I don't responsible. waste my goddamn time yeah. trying to convince people who aren't listening to me mm -hmm. at all. I'm not ever interested in changing your opinion. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if you don't like what I have to say, leave. The good thing about the, the pessimistic FEs is that they are more uh, likely to discard at FI that they see as like unsavory. Huh. Like, this INFP and this INTP were going at it. And, and he was like, you're not, you're not a, you're not an INTP, you're an INFP, because you're clashing against my morals, and you're making a moral judgment on me, yeah, and it's like... Yeah, wrong way to do it. Yeah, and it's like, no, he's actually rejecting your FI because it's terrible and stupid, and you're giving everybody a bad experience, like... <laughs> you know, empaths aren't just doormats to walk all over, they can actually, like, reject you, and maybe, that, like, you just gotta accept that that's a you problem, you're being a bad FI. That is also an interesting conversation. I, unhealthy INFPs, I just want to f***ing, 
like headlock them and just give them a noogie until they cry. They're just cute. Like I don't take them seriously. Yeah, I know. It's it's like uh, it's right, they're cute. Okay. Well, yeah. I I heard like I don't I'll just like yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Let them talk. Yeah, yeah, okay. But um, Rachel asked me um, how, like, how the relationship with the functions acts on a golden pair. How the functions act on a golden pair when yeah, they interact. Like, yeah, how the interactions with the golden pair. Uh, it's just very natural. Um, yeah. From a very fundamental, natural standpoint, you guys get each other. Mm -hmm. You're able to receive what the other is giving without any frustration. Yeah, it's almost like talking to yourself, honestly. Yeah, you're talking to your, your other self. Yeah, because when you, you you like when you have a golden pair, it's just your it's just your shadow. And you have your shadow in order to build upon yourself. Like your shadow directly interacts with your hero and it's like you get your shit together, dude. Like all the time. Chase described golden pair interactions as really high highs and really low lows. Mm -hmm. You both have to have a common goal, or else you're gonna tear each other down. You guys can read each other's minds. Yeah. Especially the intuitive golden pairs. The intuitive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's been so many times like you get you, we were playing Jackbox and and um. Oh, we were... it's so freaky. I felt really. It was a weird feeling mm -hmm. of like not being able to hide yeah me off. it pissed you off yeah I, I just like looked at him and i was like oh uh ah uh, you're the bad guy you, you're the trick well i could tell you were when you were too Did you? and i had to convince everyone else oh yeah that's the tough part isn't it that i i just like yeah. took one look at you and you said something that kind of indicated it and i yeah that you made that face and i was like i got you <laughs> The functions. How would how would this specific golden pair interact? One talks and the other listens. My experience. Yeah, I mean, that would that would be like it's energizing. Yeah. It's not a draining. Yeah, experience. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, you don't lose any any energy from it. You actually gain energy from it because you're both able to use your heroes just like nonstop. You could talk like we've had conversations where we would like talk for like four hours straight yeah it's really energizing yeah. i get to recharge and rediscover what i am what i'm supposed to do yeah it gives you a lot of clarity that's yeah. what yeah that's what i find with uh both infjs and enfjs you talk to them you figure out like a little more about yourself you figure out what you want to do where you want to go like it's 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 pretty like syn synchronous yeah it's like your functions align and you plug into each other and you start recharging like a goddamn battery <laughs> like a phone like yeah. your phone needs uh, to do any and i yeah fbfi yeah so the the, -E -T -I the any hero and the ni hero would, would would act like uh i give you like all these kind of like opportunities like to choose from like all these like mm -hmm. hypothetical ones and then you then i could pick choose. one oh yeah. that's the best one right there okay yeah. i didn't know that was an option there yeah. you go yeah, it's like laying the cards out, and you just like this okay, one. yeah, that you one's just, the best one. Just obviously. like, just like yeah. that, yeah. yeah. That's that. That would be how ENFPs and INFJs interact. Same thing for ENFJs and INFPs, uh -huh. and you know the silver pair as well. Hope you like that really just clumsy answer. <laughs> well, it won't be clum. Well, actually, it pr probably will be clumsy because we'll be ranting, and you won't be able to edit ranting, it. Ranting, raving. Yeah. Going off topic. Yeah. It's movement. Yeah. Very, very movement. Just like constant tangent any tree. That's the any tree right there. Any tree. Yeah. That's what I call it. Any tree. But any branches. It's just everywhere. I had something I wanted to ask. Um, Chase said something about SE users assume that text messages that are older loses their energy, whereas SI users do not feel like a text message loses its energy over time, meaning if a text is a week old, it's just as valid as it was when it was texted, whereas an SE user sees a week old text and it's like, well, maybe it's not as relevant anymore. Very true. Yeah. It's no longer relevant because it's not now. No, I, I figured that out eventually with you. Like, I remember uh, when I was younger, I would just like I would send a text and then you would just like read it and then not be there and then it would just never get responded to and right. I would wait and then nothing would happen so eventually I started figuring out okay if 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 a day has gone by I could just send another text and you yeah, might respond send to that another one. it's yeah. no longer relevant yeah because SE 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of women have this thing where they're just like, oh, I I, I want to send him a text, but I already sent him a text, so I can't send him another text. It's like, yeah, mm. yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. It's like as long as you're not being like obnoxious about it, there's no texting game that you have to go yeah. through. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you know the person you're texting is an SE user, go ahead and spam them. Yeah. But if they're an SI user, maybe you shouldn't. Okay. So, next question. Yes. The next question is next about... Next question. The next question is about pedagogue compatibility. So that means that um, your SI and SE are in the same cognitive attitude, basically. So they have perfect relation, uh, sexual compatibility. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I just don't see how or why this pairing would be a good long term. E INTJs to ENFPs. INTJs seem to be obsessed and very interested in all the things that I would depict as icky, like scary books, movies, reptiles, and death stuff. Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't relate. To, like, <laughs> I don't relate to seeing the death stuff as icky as an ENFP. I dated an INTJ briefly that I would easily say I was intoxicated by. How however, they suddenly didn't have money, and then they couldn't handle the ego blow, and they completely withdrew and wouldn't even talk to me for weeks. What? So this what did you do a... though? <laughs> yeah. This is all him. What did you do in reaction to him not having money? This is a very personal, like, specific experience. They Sounds like dirty laundry. Yeah, they completely shut me out. That drove me. What did you do? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like this half story. She yeah. just moved. She's just talking about what he's doing. Oh. Take it's... responsibility for yourself. How yeah, about it's, that? Yeah, it's like an ego thing because Christ. you're like, yeah. my pedagogue was supposed to be really go really well, but it didn't. So clearly, there's something wrong with the pedagogue relationship. You're not taking responsibility. Believe me, it sounds like you aren't either. Yeah. You're in, you're talking about everything they did and nothing that you did in reaction to what they did, and then you play a victim after that. <laughs> Sorry, ask an honest question. I'm not gonna treat your question seriously. <laughs> fiery sort of truth over here. Yeah. That's a shit question. That is a shit question. Do you wanna move on? <laughs> <laughs> That's an awful question. Go get your ego stroke somewhere else. Well well I can answer this as an ENFP. Okay. I I do consider INTJs to be very enticing in a kind of like a weird kind of cryptic sort of way. Yeah. It's very um like, I, I personally, like, I think I would prefer FE men, like, yeah. strongly. Like, I, I've had I've had an FE boyfriend, and even though we weren't sexually compatible, compatible the emotion, ca emotional compatibility was, like, spot on. Like, he was an FE inferior, mm -hmm. and the FE the FI parent really took care of that. Okay. Um, but the INTJs have this kind of, like, yeah, it, it is a little bit mysterious. I'd say... I do see INTJs as a little bratty right. because of their FI child, and it's just like... Yeah, you know, there's lack of social compatibility. Yeah. A pedagogue relationship is supposed to grow you because it forces you to be very self-aware and humble. Yeah. You're not humble. Your question sucks. <laughs> yeah, like, I could see... Like, I'm thinking of the functions. It's like, um, the their lack of FE would be very... Could possibly be very embarrassing right. for the TE child. It's like, oh, my my boyfriend's kind of like humiliating me yeah. a little bit with his like lack of social awareness, and it's like uh, I have to deal with this. But then you can overcome that by like being like you, very yeah, social. You have to humble yourself. Except, yeah. oh wait, hold on, we're frustrated because we're doing the same thing. Yeah, exactly. We're just doing the same thing on different ends. Like he, he's like, like oh, you're not you're not giving me you're not giving other people a good experience with your se demon and and i'm like uh you're not giving people a good experience with your fe trickster and it's like okay there's things we could both work yeah, on if you know where the other person's coming from you're trying to do the same thing you can't get mad at that the relationship didn't work because you didn't put enough work in oh yeah that's the thing that's another thing about golden pairs if if you're a gold if you meet a golden pair and one of you isn't developed or neither of you are developed, yeah, it's, it's gonna, not gonna work. It's gonna crash and burn. Like you have to make sure that both of you are developed if you want that golden pair to work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're better off sticking to something like a silver pair where you'll actually learn to respect each other just automatically with your nature. Right. Because silver pair is good for that. You have uh, your 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 hero function is tapping into their parent function and it's like, oh hey, I respect how responsible you are about that. Yeah. And then you're able to also your their hero function also helps you develop your critic function 
because you're uh, their hero is your critic. So it's like with the ENFJ, uh, he helps me I to. Yes, we could talk about it that way. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that perspective. Oh, no problem. I see. So I'm going to go to my pedagogue. Okay. Because I'm an ENFJ. Yeah. I think I am. <laughs> they, I feel like ENTPs can see the truth more than I can. Um, right. Because it's obvious to them. Yeah. And I think that has to do with any. I'm too self-absorbed, and I don't have the TE to even care what people think. Mm -hmm. ENTPs can tell me, and I and they're so candid. I can just accept it. My TI child loves it. Yeah, it loves the integrity. We're gonna annoy the shit out of each other because because of the, the arrogance of the TI parent mm -hmm. will stomp on my TI child. I would never be able to talk in that relationship. Mm. So it would be very tough. Yeah. Again, though, but they would never be able to like out polite me they wouldn't be able to out people person me that would probably bother them yeah they they wouldn't be able to that is an issue because you wouldn't be able to use your child because it would be overridden by their parent well it would take a lot of humility now i if i were to like get in a relationship with an entp mm -hmm. i would be excited to like test my grit and now but in the past let's say i was a younger person it wouldn't work yeah i would be too insulted yeah. It's very tough. It, it is very humbling. That's Yeah, that's the that's the thing that the pedagogues are good for. My experience, especially when it comes to camaraderie, I mm -hmm. love ENTPs. There are lots of types I like. I like ENTPs. ESTPs are cool. ENFPs get me. Yeah. And INFPs are cute. ENFJs are annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're, everything that's responsible about you is arrogant in them. And everything that's arrogant in you is responsible in them. And so it's like neither of you respect each other. It's like second second time you met that ENFJ, he was just like fucking just so abrasive and you were just not having it. It was so funny. <laughs> it was so funny. It's because cause you were like looking at him like, why are you using your FB like that? What the fuck are you doing, dude? You're so loud. It's fake. It comes off as fake to me. Yeah. Yeah, you tried to call him on his bullshit because he was trying to be like, oh, oh, do you want me to leave? I'm sorry, am I, am I giving you a bad experience? And you were like, yeah, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. But... I remember it very clearly. It was so funny. He was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever told me that. Re what? Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get out of here. No, you said, yeah, get out of here I to did? him. You did. Jesus Christ, yeah, I'm an yeah. asshole. Yeah, you are. I said that? I don't remember that. Y you don't remember that? I don't believe like, you. you. Did were, I say well, that? You did. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you were a little tipsy. Oh, yeah. shit, that makes sense. Yeah, we were on the treadmills, and he he can't, he like, he saw that I was like talking to you, and we're in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> and and he, he came up, and he was like, hey, what's up, man, what's up? Now I feel bad. And it already happened. It did. It oh, happened a long time ago. And yeah. He shouldn't like me. Huh? He shouldn't like me. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't like you. <laughs> uh, what happened was, so this is how the conversation went. Um, <laughs> Thanks for telling me because I don't remember. You don't? So tell me what happened with me. Okay, so we were having a conversation about my ESFP roommate and I was like, yeah, she, she, she was very needy and clingy until mm -hmm. she stopped respecting me and then she turned into a bitch. And then that's when, that's when the ENFJ chimed in. And he was like, "Hey, sup?" Like he was right next to me. He was like, "Hey, sup, man? Sup? How are you doing?" And and uh, you, he was like, "Oh yeah, I was just talking her ear off." And I was like, "Oh, you're like me." And 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 you're like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna stop talking now." And I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, man. Am I bothering you?" Like, <laughs> why did that happen that way? Why did it happen that way? Well, because we were talking about. Well, first of was all, was I annoyed that he interrupted? No. Oh. Um, we were talking about uh, personal stuff. So we oh yeah so I'm like, very introvert. I don't like talking about personal stuff and yeah. when there's a third person. Yeah, so I just shut down. Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, am I bothering you?" And you and you were like, "Yeah, get out of here." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, I was trying to joke with him." Yeah, yeah. You you said it with a smile too, but um, <laughs> um he was like, he I was, remember it now. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, am I bothering you? I can go." And and you were like, "Yeah, get out of here." <laughs> I love me. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Jesus, that's funny. And he was like, what? Like, Did just, he really take offense? He, 
That's hilarious. He saw it as a challenge. Oh. I mean, you both are Templars, so yeah. Oh, he's just trying to fucking square up with you. He's like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm so detached. Like, I'm not. I'm sure he wants a lot more out of you than I do because I'm already acquainted with you. So he feels the need to challenge. Like, dude, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm happy for the both of you. Oh my God, yeah. But he and, doesn't know that. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know where you're coming from at mm -hmm. all. Like he just saw you as a threat. But and you take up the same role role that he does. You're a Templar, so mm -hmm. fair enough. But a Templar. Templar. But um. And he was like, I, I, I mean, I got head, but like he, he kind of met you halfway because he was like, oh, you're calling him, calling me on my shit, but I gotta. I gotta like double down. Just a I like hearing somehow. stories about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's like a new story, but I kind of remember most of that. Yeah. Yeah, that is an interesting experience, isn't it? I forget everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, and he was like, "I got headphones right here. I could just, I could just put them on. You mm -hmm. guys can continue your conversation." Yeah. Like, and and he was just like very. It was so he was so annoyed. I could feel it. I was like, oh no, I'm sorry. I should have I should have tried to figure out a way to incorporate you into this conversation. You but, felt responsible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I felt like I should have done something, you know, because it it was it was essentially over my attention. So it's like I should have been a acting party, and I, like I was so anxious, but everything was okay. But he he did act very territorial afterwards. You after you left, rather. Like, he, he was trying really hard to get my attention. And that's how the functions play out. <laughs> yeah, you can't talk to your extroverted or introverted self. He's an ENFJ. What are you, why are you that's doing? That's my job. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're the Templar. I'm the dude, Templar. Dude, the, there was an ISTP. This is another reason that I think that that guy that everybody's saying is an ENTJ is a fucking ENFJ because there was another Templar and she was getting really fucking annoyed with him. She was like just getting really pissed off with him just for no reason. And she was like, I didn't like that guy. He, ah, he rubbed me the wrong way. And she was like ragey. And I was like, okay. Oh, I have another example. Mm hmm. From work. Uh huh. I don't care. She's an ENFJ. <laughs> <laughs> And I know a guy, an ISTP guy, very obvious ISTP, mm -hmm. hate each other. Really? She hates him. All he did was one thing, no. It was Oh. Hate. Oh, man. Not really, but it's like he rubs her the wrong way all the time by accident. Yeah. They have all the same functions. Mm. Just like me and her, but like. He's immature. Yeah, he's a little less developed. I'm a little more. I put a little mask on, you know. Yeah. Going to my, my shadow so I can interact with her. Mm-hmm. If, if you are like, if you have your other sides of your mind developed where you can use them comfortably, yeah. you're you're more, uh, likely to get along with a lot more people. But if if you're primarily in your ego all the time, then and you yeah. can only use your ego. Then you're gonna see a lot of people yeah. that rub you the wrong way. I saw that happen with her and him a lot, boy. Mm. And I was like, really? What do you do? It's just nothing obvious. Mm. He just didn't like us. I don't know. He just doesn't. I don't like the shit he said. I feel that way about INFPs too. Like when they're just throwing their feelings about peop at people, I'm just like, they're just. I like can understand it, Ellie. Mm -hmm. I just have to think of an ENFJ, <laughs> and I'll be like, that's an INFP to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why are you doing it that way? Stop. Stop. <laughs> just do stop. Stop, Bingo, you fucking But if I'm here, you just both F eyes look at me. Yeah. I mean, woo, look at me. I'll perform. <laughs> and just, you're like, just, yeah. Just strike both of you F eyes. Yay. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's how it feels like. You're, you're really hamming up that thing that I'm responsible mm -hmm. with. That's how it feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly how it feels. It's just like an exaggerated kind of, it's almost, ooh, you could think of it as like, the reason that you get annoyed with it is like, it's almost like a parody of you. Yep. Yeah, like, it's just like, oh, you're so ham on these things that I'm trying to like, actually be humble with. Yeah. And it's like, why? It, it's like, it, you know? I understand your perspective now, Mm-hmm. All I have to do is think about <laughs> and feel the rage building.